Hello and welcome to the Superhero Hub, I'm Sam. I'm Matt. And today we're reviewing... Legion. Your favourite TV show. Might be, it's the best comic book TV show. I like the, I like the John Hamm thing this week. John Hamm, you've uh, lost me. Uh, the tick and the dog. And I, I did kind of laugh... When they were, when like, you know, they did the green means go and red means stop, and then the kid walks out into the road and gets splat. I did laugh. It was a bit dark, but yeah, I thought that bit was cool because, like, yeah, the big things like, oh, John Ham narrates it on the down low, so that's the kind, uh, of, that's the kind of Easter egg. So yeah, I thought this was a decent episode. One thing I learnt, like, the the Arab guy from. Wonder Woman was meant to pay a mile for Rook, but he dropped out just before recording for some reason. There was a bit of a mystery over that. So we got a different guy playing a mile for Rook mm-hmm. in the season so See, far. I wonder how to receive this version of Shadow King. Because it's... We got a bit of an answer to a question we had last week about is Lenny... A real person? Was she ever a real person, or something made up? Clearly, Lenny was at one point a real person. Yeah. But how much of the way she acted as the Shadow King last season was her? How much of it was him? Um. Because all that, you know, like that pseudo sexual thing she was doing. How much was that her, or was that him? I'd say it was a mix of both. Interesting. Yeah. So just, because I can't imagine this guy doing that. But he's in control. Um, I, I don't know what to say. Because I don't know if he was pump faking, you know, when they were doing the wrestling and he was like, what's the word, homoerotic? And then David, David threw a bit of a hissy fit. Uh, I don't know, but that stuff's always like that. There's a bit of, like, undertones to anything like that when, like, the two guys fight against each other. Like, in any show, like, really, when it comes down to that stuff, if you look at it, you can kind of, you know, there's a bit of teasing and and stuff like that. It's cool, I liked it. I just find myself, like... Because they kind of... They were talking about it at the, the beginning of the episode when they were on the... What's that thing called? A, a Ferris wheel or whatever the fuck it is. You know, when they're sat on the horses and whatnot. When they're on there. Carousel. Carousel, there you go. And they were... Um, Making a deal. They, yeah, David basically said the same thing about Lenny. And the guy was like, it doesn't really matter. But I suppose it doesn't. But I still think, how do I perceive her? I think she now she's a diff, She's more individual now from him because he don't need because he said it this episode, but you could tell like last episode as well. He don't need her anymore, so she's her own self. And now she's like, "Yo, hook me up with a body because I want to go my separate ways because I'm bored." And it was like, oh, "Okay, then if I do that, what are you gonna do?" Uh, as in, like, you know what I mean? And she was like, "Oh, I, I kind of get what you mean." So we'll kind of see what happens there. That may she wouldn't really have a purpose outside it now. Um, I was confused why I kept talking French. She was switching between talking normally and talking French. And my my thing is, like I thought, like he walks around as Oliver, but if he if he's like psychic and could read minds and project things into people's minds, purely we know that because obviously he, he split. Carry and carry, and then like he froze her, and then like grabbed him and like dashed him through the thing. Like, why wouldn't he project into people's mind his Amal Farouk look as opposed to walking around as Oliver, looking like I don't think he. I would get. I don't think he wants to. So that's interesting. I think. I think. I think he just does this because he uses what he considers most effective. I think. I think he thought Lenny would get to um, David, the same as appearing as a dog. Yeah, but I don't see how 
because they know if Oliver turns up, they know it's not Oliver. It's not like they're going to be like, yo, Oliver, what's popping? Like, he, tr- I don't think is especially because he can read minds as well. So he kind of knows that no one's falling the facade. So I guess the only thing that would be there is but, that he's mugging them off. Yeah, and also, remember, a facade is, is his entire thing. The entire, the shadow, the shadow king thing, that's all a facade. It's all a load of crap to hide the fact he's just some dude. Nah, I, I, th- I think sh- the Shadow King is like, because he set is an ego thing as opposed to a facade. I think that's what he really believes because like when he was talking to David about, oh, we're gods, we're bigger than Jesus, I think that's his ego. Like, I ain't just some normal guy, I'm the Shadow King. I'm the, I'm well, the, maybe, I, but... I, I'm big pimping, you know what I mean? But, I, but either way, this, whatever logic you use, the same thing would apply. He doesn't want them to see him. He wants to see something that's larger than life, or he wants them to see Oliver or her. He doesn't want to be seen as a Martha Rook. Not by normal people, anyway. Maybe David, because he considers him to be on the same level. Okay. I did like the bit about... I think there was a few like things in that. One bit I bet you liked was uh, before he kind of... No, another thing as well is like... His psychic thing, his power, I went off on a bit of a tangent. Like, he blasts people into dust. I don't get how he can do that. So I'm thinking maybe when he was a parasite in David, maybe he took some of his abilities out as well. So it kind of worked out well for him, because I don't see how he can vaporise people. That, that, that to me, is interesting. No, not in the real world, anyway. Because that's that's not in his skill set. No, yeah, you're right. I don't know. Maybe you picked him up along, along the way. Who knows? Yeah. What powers? Do we remember what powers does Oliver have? Oliver's psychic. Psychic. Okay. Well, he's already got that, hasn't he? Yeah. So, um, yeah. My thing was when um, Carey was uh, fiddling about with the orb, and he was like, uh, and he said, "Oh, it's advanced, but I don't think it's Shi'ar." And then it was like, I think I made it. So there was a little Easter egg in there mm-hmm. that I imagine you would have appreciated. Um, one thing I'm in, another thing, and there are other things about like Miser Sunday, which isn't kind of linked to anything, but apparently that's what wiped out all the Mygo monks. And then one thing I was interested, like the monk at the end, like is in the room with like, I guess it's a good place to hide because people ain't really going to look and that's obviously, you know, he was at Division 3 and didn't look through there. So he must have got in there of his own accord because if he came into contact with Farouk, who obviously all them other people who were chief chattering, then he would have known. So he's in there, he's in the room, and he's made no attempt to... Dis- he's like the mo- the biggest monk-looking guy ever. He's got, he's got his robe and his spot on his forehead. But his teeth ain't chattering, but his eyes are going ten to the dozen. And I'm kind of interested how he kind of got in there. And, yeah, that to me mm. is interesting. I liked... Um... The fact, and we'll get into what the, f- the future. Oh God, what's his girlfriend called? I forget her name every time. Sid. Sid. He saw. Her, well, we'll do that first. He saw her in the future again. Is the thing that's wiping them out the legacy virus? Um, I I don't know too much about that. Like he said something about play. Did she actually say play? Because I was under the impression. She was saying, oh, yeah, uh, Farouk kills some people, but this thing kills everyone. I thought, and the reference, because she, she goes to him, he goes, oh, well, am I dead? And she didn't really give a clear answer and stuff like that. And she says, oh, well, I like you like this, where you're sweet. So I was thinking maybe what she was talking about was Legion. Like as in maybe as in you're not dead. You just you you like you as a you as a personality is dead. You as a person is dead, but physically you're legion. So I thought maybe she was talking about that. Maybe he loses his shit and then wipes everyone out. And she 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 obviously needs Farouk alive 
to help defeat that with the mental ability to maybe lock Legion away or something like that, like Xavier did with the Phoenix in in the crappy X-Men film. That's the vibe I was getting because she didn't give a clear answer on him and she kind of seemed sad like she'd lost him. I think it's interesting as well, she says. Obviously, she's come back in the past because a week from now, he murks, uh, obviously, Fruit gets his body back and he ends up killing him in the desert. But obviously, she's like, she's trying to stop him from killing him because he needs him. And he says as well, oh, yeah, uh, I'll, like, we on a debt. So if you help me get my body back, I'll be in your debt. And that'll obviously be our... I need your help to defeat this. But yeah, he he said to her a plague or something like Mm. that. But when I was watching that, I didn't really hear a reference to plague or anything like that. She was just like a thing. So I figured she was talking about Legion, him. Me either. I I, I did figure at some point he's going to go crazy again. I just I don't know if he's the thing that's wiping them all out. She's interesting as well because we had that cat thing again. Like she yes. she keeps escaping into the cat, and I'm thinking, is that a kind of mental thing for her that she's kind of she's a bit all over the place as well that she keeps dipping into that. But she took the fact that he was lying or kind of not telling her the truth well because normally in other shows, if it was actually from, I was relieved. Yeah, I was thinking, oh, I beg she don't throw no big bitch fit or anything like that. She was quite, she was quite well, mature about it. I like that. I, my concern was more that he wouldn't tell her. Um, it was going to drag on like a secret throughout the city. Because we already had that thing where I guess his personality was talking to him. Yeah. Why yeah. doing it? And I, I was thinking, oh, is this going to be the thing for the season? I'm glad he told her at least. One thing is the uh, the lady that runs the or the Oliver's man. wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. Her role is very different now. She was in charge last season, and now she almost fit, we're only two episodes into the season, but at the minute she almost feels like a bit of a, a tacked on character, like her purpose is done without and. In a way, they are actually kind of writing that into the character as well. That without Oliver, she doesn't really have a pur- purpose, and she kind of said it herself. So I'm wondering, like, is she going to find one, or is this just her character on its last legs before they write out? Yeah, she's very negative. Um, one thing yeah, I was going to say... wouldn't you? Yeah, one thing I was going to say... Yeah, I think you were saying about um, him not telling her about... I, that wouldn't have made sense to me because he's an ex-drug addict. He's kind of he's been through a lot of therapy and been in these kind of been in these facilities with his mental help, where the majority of the time people have kind of been urging him to kind of be honest and like tell people things and stuff like that. So I thought it would have been out of character for him if he didn't tell her. I get hiding it for a bit until he because he didn't really understand it himself. But when he kind of understood what was going on and got a better grasp of it, it would have been completely out of character and wouldn't make sense for him to keep hiding it, especially if he's getting asked. I get him say is him kind of being a bit booky about it with the burned face guy because he kind of doesn't trust him. And I thought maybe they were going to, because he's suspicious of him, but they kind of brushed that away like, oh, yeah, your your job's to be suspicious. I thought they were going to build a kind of intimate bond between them two, being that he, if he rumbled his secret. But they kind of, now he's kind of done that. There's, there's not really much room for that. I mean, it could happen because he hasn't told everyone. You know what I mean? So, yeah. That's that was my observation. I wonder if David, because I'm gonna say right now, I would hazard a guess that there's no way to save Oliver, and he will die if he isn't dead already. But I wonder if like does David have a plan for how to save Oliver? Because I, I can't imagine a way. Because I... Lenny was talking to Farouk about giving her a new body. He kind of left it in the air about whether he could do that or not. I don't think he wants to. But is there a way to do that? 
I think he could just buy new body. It's just taking Lenny's mind and then just putting it in someone else. Like finding a person, wiping their mind and whacking her mind into theirs. You know, like the finger on the flash. Um, with Oliver, I think because he's hosting at the minute that um, I don't think he ever he was ever a host in Lenny. So I guess her body just decayed and died after he killed her and took her mind, you know what I mean? So there's no body, no Lenny body for her to go into. Um, but I think with Oliver, because he's in possession of him right now, when he gets his mind into f his body, that maybe he'll let Oliver's mind take over Oliver's body or maybe he'll just render Oliver catatonic or something and put him in the same place as he was first season I, d I don't know May maybe uh, David will be like he'll be lenient with him you know what I mean I helped you out but don't don't, don't mark Oliver as a result of you going into your body you know what I mean because obviously but I don't know whether there, there hasn't really been um, an Oliver personality you know what I mean? It, it, like, even when, kind of, I I, I don't know, because you had the bit on... Is the, the, see, that's what kind of threw me as well, is, you know, when he was walking, when they were walking through the place and they were blowing people up and whatnot? Yeah. They were both there. So is, how how does that work? I don't... Is Oliver the one that's actually there and she is this something that's projected by him? No. Or what? I think How can they both be there? For Rook's there in Oliver's body, and I guess he's projecting Lenny, or Lenny's like right. Lenny's like the parasite to him, because she's a spare part in his mind, because he took it, and she's just like like Jiminy Cricket's conscience, like she's there, like maybe he doesn't want her there, but because he took her mind as uh, 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 into his thing, she's there as like. Like, he's got no choice but to have her there. You know what I mean? Because there's nowhere else to go. So as a pushback, she's like, oh, I'm going to be uh, uh, I'm gonna be a kind of consultant. Because I haven't seen, except maybe, because it's kind of blurred lines. Do you know last episode when they were on the sunbeds? I don't know whether that was Farouk talking out of Oliver's body or that was actually Oliver's personality trapped inside Farouk, trapped inside the body. Because... I haven't seen... I would hazard a guess, and it is a guess, I would hazard a guess that really was Oliver. Yeah, because... Because I... they, get, they, get, they did the, the jump in the jump in the jump, didn't they? Yeah, because I haven't really... Apart from that, there hasn't really been an instance of Oliver's personality in there. It's just been Oliver's body in, and Farouk doing stuff. You know what I mean? So in terms of oh, if there's an Oliver personality left, I think uh, I think maybe there could be. But whether Farouk decides to do anything with that or not's another thing. Because for all we know, when he gets his body back, he could just be double crossing. He seemed he seemed legitimate, but you know I don't know enough about the guy. Yeah, okay, that's what I mean. I think that that's what causes a bit of the problem in a good way but that's what causes a bit of a problem is what is his personality because now i'm thinking about last season and thinking what was lenny and what was him because mm. lenny's still lenny for the most part the, mo the most genuine i've ever seen her was that moment when she was asking for a new body Aside from that, it's always been that creepy look and the dark thing. But is that her or is that him? I Seems more her than him at this point. I think that might the might be kind. Of, I, 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 I don't know. In some way, I think it is. In other ways, I think it isn't. But yeah, because the, the big the big monster thing that was walking around that's definitely got to be him. Yeah, yeah. As in, as in, like the Shadow King. Like, oh look what I can do. Yeah. I'm this big sinister thing. You know what I mean? Uh, let's talk numbers unless there's anything else because I think we, we literally covered everything pretty deeply. I'm trying to think if there's anything we missed. Oh, are they, are they separated for good? Uh, who? Uh, Ollie and... or the Shadow King and David? Are no, they... no, the, the, the two. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, because she's aging now. Um, yeah. I th it's not because the general thing is 
she comes out of him but now the shadow king's fucked him up he comes out of her and she said she was sitting and talking and she said look you, you do the boring thing of being out here and getting old and stuff like that and i only come out for the exciting shit to beat people up and now she's out for the boring stuff and he only pops out for the exciting thing and now she's starting to age because her hair went white um i don't i i think that's the dynamic because you see them both pop out but I don't know whether I I haven't seen, if they pop back into each he pops back into her then they're not split permanently. But I think the dynamic is that she's she's emerging and he's the one who just pops out every so often and she's not comfortable with that because she's always been the one who kind of pops out and he's the prominent one. That's such an obvious idea, but a great one. I didn't really think about it to this them straight away, but I want. It was jokes, How far when, w- it was jokes yeah, when, when he puts him back in there and the hand's just hanging out of the stomach and David's like, mm. whoa. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like, that's distressing. Like, he's seen people, like, get turned to dust and there's, like, some random hand popping out their chest. Yeah, what were you going to say? I don't remember, and it doesn't matter. I still, I think that was great. I think it's a great episode. I'm going to give it an A. Point five. Well, you're going to give it an 8.7 or something. <laughs> no, I was stuck between 8 and 8.5. Oh. I feel like I'm going to be generous. 8.5. Thought, yeah, I've, I'll give it the same. There, there, there was a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. I, it was kind of simple as well. It, it was cool, but kind of like not overly complicated because the, the majority of the points they made... Out of ten points they made, they explained about eight of them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I like. See, even even you know, not not too much happened in this episode. Mm. But if you got good writing and good characters, here you go. Just don't repeat yourselves. Flash. I'm Sam. I'm Matt. And we'll see you next time on the Hub.